Hey, Teddy K here for the Best Buy blog, and in this video review, we take a look at the Microsoft Surface Laptop 4, one of Microsoft's latest Surface devices, and a laptop that aims to do a lot of things the right way. The Surface Laptop 4 is not exactly a new foray for Microsoft, and if you've used the Surface Laptop 3, this is not a huge upgrade. Now, I haven't used the 3, so for me, this was, this was a new avenue. And I'm coming at it from that approach. So if you have not used the Surface Laptop before, or if you are skipping a few generations, you might find something that you like here. This is, this is a great machine in a lot of ways. And I do like the mix that Microsoft pursued here. And I, I use the word mix very strongly because that is essentially what you have to accept if you're gonna go with this too. Now I'm gonna explain about that too. First things first, when we look at the screen, it's a 13.5 inch pixel sense display. It's above a 1080p panel. So if you're looking for something with a little bit of a higher resolution, you will get that here. It's of course a touch screen also uh, that works with the Surface Pen. So if you do like using the stylus, that's not gonna be a problem here. The screen is pretty vibrant. Uh, it's really nice actually. I, I do like the quality of the screen. I didn't have an issue with it at all. Uh, the brightness could have been a little bit brighter, not gonna lie, but it could have been just a little bit more. Uh, but at the same time, you know, if you're used to working in dimmer conditions, uh, then you're probably not gonna complain too much about that. The other thing too is that I like how the screen is complemented by the keyboard and the trackpad. So uh, this is one of the best trackpads I've used on a Windows machine. And that's saying something because I've used a lot of them, but it just felt really, really smooth and, and just slick. And the keyboard too is really nice. Now, I know that not everybody has liked Surface keyboards. This one to me is just, I don't know, it just felt right. The key travel may be a little shorter than other keyboards tend to be, but I just found it really just fluid. It didn't make a lot of noise either, which I appreciated. And, and it, it, it felt nice. The felt, actually, play on words there, the felt that surrounds the trackpad, uh, this is an interesting design. I, I am a little bit on the fence uh, for it, I mean, it feels great, but my problem with it is that if, if for whatever reason it gets dirty, it's not the easiest thing to clean. And over time, you know, obviously you're, you're resting your hands on it. I, I don't know. I, I wonder about the longevity of using this kind of material. Uh, Microsoft says that it's easy to clean. I don't know. I, I'm not so sure about that because I just feel like there, it's enough of a porous substance where, you know, or a porous surface where uh, dirt can really, really kind of get in there and just kind of stay there. Another thing though, that I do wish Microsoft would have given a little more credence to, or at least paid more attention to, or just done something with, was, is the ports. So there are not a lot of ports here. There's a USB-C port, a USB-A port, a headphone jack, and the Microsoft Connect Plus port to charge the device and to use other peripherals that use it as well. And it, look, that's not a lot, okay? For a laptop that is of this caliber, you'd like to have something else on top of that. I mean, the USB-C port doesn't even do Thunderbolt, for example, so if you are going to connect an external monitor to this, you will need an adapter or a hub to pull that off. That is a bit of a, a downer, really, because I feel like if you had Thunderbolt on here, then you could, you could do a lot of different things with it, but unfortunately, Microsoft didn't do that nor could they find the space or the room to put a second USB-C port on here, which I think would have been of real benefit too, especially for connecting any peripherals that could use that port. So as is, you're probably gonna have to splurge for a hub or an adapter if you don't have one, if you plan to use this in any way with other devices, especially with monitors. When it comes to workflow, I have to sort of look at it from a couple of different angles because that's, that's what I came away with while using this. So for example, now right now, you know, I've got, I've got Lightroom open here. Uh, this is the browser-based version, but I had used also the regular program. Uh, it's not that you can't use programs like that. So creative programs where you're photo editing, video editing, things like that, you can use them. The issue comes in is when you're multitasking with those apps. Part of the problem here is that the RAM is too low in my opinion. It's eight gigs. Now my, uh, my review unit was an Intel Core i5 with eight gigs of RAM. There are AMD variants and there certainly are variants with 16 gigs of RAM as well. So there's a lot of different configurations. I can't speak to the AMD uh, variants because I didn't, get, I didn't get to test those. So I don't know how much better or worse they might be in, the, in, the, in any particular case. But when it comes to usability here, there is, there is a, a catch to what you're gonna do. 
the laptop's certainly capable, but if you're gonna multitask in a very big way and you're, you're drawing a lot of power in a creative app that you're using, especially when it comes to graphics power, you probably would want something with a better graphics chip, but certainly something with more RAM, so at least you can offset uh, the lack of the graphics prowess in this case. What I found when I was using it was that I would find, I, I would get a slow down, like for example, if I was adjusting a slider in Lightroom, it, it, it would delay. There was a lag in applying the effect. That, I mean, to me, that's just unacceptable. I can't have that if I'm editing a photo and I imagine others like you watching might feel the same way. That's not always the case. If I was running Lightroom alone, I might not have that issue. Certainly if I was running it with better specs, for example, more RAM, then I definitely wouldn't have that issue at all, I don't think. But because I didn't get to test it, I don't know. What I can say is that if you are doing any kind of work, I mean, the three, two, three by two aspect ratio is perfect for documents, for spreadsheets, anything where you benefit from the extra vertical real estate. And so for that reason, I, I look at this more as a productivity utility kind of laptop as opposed to a content creation laptop. And what I mean by that is that if you're looking to create video, photos, things like that, I feel like you would benefit more from a laptop that has better graphics, a better graphics chip, uh, probably more RAM, or is otherwise a little more customizable when it comes to the configuration that you go with. All of these things that I'm talking about, and I know that it seems like I'm negative a little bit on this laptop, but I, I, well, I'm, it's not so much that I'm negative, I'm, just, I'm trying to be very specific about who I think it's for. And I want to add to that about the battery life, because I feel like battery life plays a significant part in this, or at least in, in the point I'm trying to make. As is, now Microsoft, I don't know, it rates, it rates this at about 12 hours or so. I, I've seen different numbers. I, I never got 12 hours using this. And 10 was a good number, if I could get to that. And that's with pretty moderate mixed usage. It, it wasn't with any heavy usage, so if I was I don't know if I was playing a lot of video, if I'm editing tons of photos and I'm doing it hour for hours, I'm not gonna even hit 10 hours in most cases. So you can definitely find better battery life with other laptops. This one here, I found you had to make a choice. So I had to make a choice. I had to prioritize either performance or battery life. Uh, oftentimes, if I try to maneuver between the two, there, one of the two would probably get in the way or disappoint me. So uh, if you want to prioritize best perform you know, performance, no problem. This is gonna be great. You wanna prioritize battery life, it will last longer too. The, what I'm getting at here is that to get both at the same time, all the time, I don't know that this laptop is gonna be able to do that for you if you're using apps that are very demanding. So for that reason, I feel like it, it is a great laptop for a, a mixed use case. So you're doing some word processing, maybe a spreadsheet, maybe then you need to edit a photo, you're watching some video, you're consuming content, you're, you, you know, all those things. When you're, when you're looking this, at this as an all around laptop, I can see the benefit from it. If you're doing a lot of work with words, numbers, things like that, you're not gonna have much of a problem here. If it's something creative, just bear in mind or just be mindful of what it is you're looking to do and how you're looking to do it before you even consider this one. And that's my review of the Microsoft Surface Laptop 4 for the Best Buy blog. I'm Teddy K. Thanks for watching.